Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the yes. world. Amen. God's good. Yeah. Oh. All right. So tonight we're in chapter 8, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that is correct. And uh, I'm enjoying our study in Corinthians. Corinthians. In Corinthians, <laughs> I'm enjoying our study. Amen. It's Amen. good to go through these things because we learn a lot and we understand and we, we really can get in there and dissect the word. Tonight, our scripture is about eating meat that has been sacrificed to idols. It's not a very long chapter, but we're going to spend a good amount of time in there talking about some different things. So chapter 8, 1 Corinthians, chapter, uh, verse 1, we'll just jump right in tonight. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifies. So Paul is talking to the Corinthians here, and they have questioned him on eating things that has been sacrificed to idols, okay? They didn't understand what was going on because the Gentiles that had been saved, they was in idol worship. I mean, heavy idol worship. That's where uh, the Israelites kept going back to. And they learned it from when they went into Canaan's land. Instead of doing away with all that stuff and putting all the idols out of their houses, they went in to idol worship their sales. So we have here in Corinth, the Gentiles that were saved, they were still, you know, worshiping idols in some cases. Amen? Yeah. And they were still having parties, dinner parties. And when, say, I was a Gentile and I was worshiping an idol god, I would have a great feast a lot of times to worship this idol. And I, not only me and my family, but I would invite my friends to come to my house and we'd have a party or whatever you'd like to call it and, and have like an idol feast. All right. So I'm trying to explain it like I learned it. Amen. It's it's kind of conf this This chapter is kind of confusing. It's kind of like worship, wasn't it? Like yes. Like when you come together. Like that's that. what it was. And and. They come together in one household or in the temple or wherever it was, and they would eat these things and they would have music and they'd do their thing, you know. And Paul is preaching to them, saying, Look, you know, just because they're doing one thing and the law says this thing, you know, we've got to come together. That's what he's trying to do. This whole chapter is about <clears throat> not offending your brother and doing what is right so somebody else doesn't fall, okay? That's right. So he says, we all have knowledge, but knowledge puffeth, puffeth up. I can't talk tonight. Puffeth <laughs> up, but charity edifies. So in other words, he's like, look, y'all got the knowledge, and y'all are very knowledgeable in all things. But what good is your knowledge if you're coming in and you're doing all these things and it's making your brother fall? That's not love. That's right. Amen. See, if I'm... If I'm loving Susan, if I love Susan like I say I love her, nothing in my walk with God would cause her to stumble because I love her soul and I don't want to see anything that I do hurt her. That's Amen? Right. And the same for her. The her walk with God should be as so that anything she does or says, it shouldn't be hurting to my conscience or to my heart to make me fall. Amen? That's right. And that's what was happening here. They were so puffed up in knowledge, you know, that they didn't love one another and they was doing things that they shouldn't have been doing. All right, verse 2. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. That's where we get ourselves in trouble, ain't it? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Let's break it down. That's right. We think we know it all. We know it all a lot of times. If we come to the house of God with the with the mentality of, I know nothing, but I want you to do it in me, we would leave out the door different. Amen? Right. But we come in 
with all of our knowledge and all of our study and all of our years under our belt, and we can't get nothing from God because we already know it all. Right. Come on, y'all. That's right. And that's not love. That's not love of God. That's not love of his word. That's mm -hmm. not love of the teaching. Well, we come in and we know more than the preacher. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. Because we've been in church longer than the preacher. Come on. Right, you, see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And we've been living holy longer than so-and-so. So we we go against that and we don't love them like we should because we're too smart for our own good. Right. Amen? Amen. Y'all help Amen. me tonight. That's right. There's a, a scripture also that says, when you think you stand, take heed lest you fall. That's right. you got to be careful when you think you've arrived because that's when you're getting ready to just fall flat on your face, you know? We need to realize that we are nothing and we are nobody. That's right. But God is everything and somebody. Amen. Amen. And when we lay our lives down, not just our lives, but our intellect. Amen our minds, yes. then he can work in us because he has clay to form. But if we come in with our chest poked out mm -hmm. and we think we know everything, he can't use us. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you tonight, but I want to be used of God. Amen. I want to live my life where he can use me as his clay and he's my potter. Yes. Amen. Yes. And he can do whatever he needs to do in my life to help someone else. It says, if any man love God, the same is known of him. Come on. If any man loves God, the same is known of him. If I love God tonight, I'm going to walk in such a way that you're going to know that I love God. That's right. <laughs> and not only that, but this it gets deeper here. It gets deeper. The same is known of him. God loves me. Come on now. Amen. This is a deep scripture right here. I mean, it, it seems like it looks like an outward thing, but it's a spiritual thing. He said, if any man love God, the same is known of him. See, if I love God tonight and I'm walking according to his word, I know that God loves me because he loves holiness. That's right. God loves his word. God loves his will. And as long as I'm in his will, Amen. Come on. That's right. He loves me. Yes. Amen. That's right. Even more so. Absolutely. You say, well, you're saying he don't love the sinner. He, God loves the world that he gave his only begotten son. Come on. That's, That's right. right. The whole world. And we need to know that tonight, that not only should they know that we love God, but we got to know that God loves us yes. is what I'm saying. That's right. Amen. And not in a knowledge of being puffed up and ignorant. Because that's how we are mm -hmm. when we think that we know more than someone else or whatever. You know, we, we try to roll in. We think we're smarter and so and so. I'm talking about spiritual things now. We roll in and, and this and that and this and that. We can't be used of God and we're not showing it. How is that love? How am I showing you love when I belittle you because I've studied one subject more than you have? Or you've been to church longer than I've been to church. Probably longer than I've been alive. Come on. Some of you in here has probably been to church longer than I have been alive. Amen? Amen. And we could take that knowledge and puff it up and cause someone else to stumble. That's right. Amen? All right, let's move on. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. Amen. So he's saying here that there's many idols. These heathen people, come on, us heathen people a lot of times, we got a lot of idols going on in our lives. Amen. They had a lot of idols in this place. In Corinth, there was many idols, and they were sacrificing all over the place to these idols. Come on. Right. And Paul is telling them, he's saying, look, an idol is nothing. 
It has no power. That's right. It can't do a thing. It can't take a breath. It can't do anything. And it has no influence in your spirituality. Amen. You can cut yourself. You look at them on the mount there. Mm -hmm. When Elijah went to the top of the mount and they brought all the prophets, the word of God says they cut their sails, they screamed, they hollered, they danced, they prayed. They did all they could to their idol. Come on. And you know what happened? Nothing. Nothing. Matter of fact, the man of God made fun of them. He said, well, why don't you cry a little louder? I think he's off on vacation and he can't hear you. Oh, he might be asleep. You might need to yell a little louder so he can hear you. And then they started cutting themselves. And it says they did that all day. Amen. So Paul is telling these people, he's like, look, you got all these idols, and all these idols are in this city, and they ain't worth a hill of beans. They don't have any power. They can't do anything. There's no supernatural thing, and their power can't take what God has made clean and make it unclean. Amen. That's right. Amen? Amen. That's right. I said what God has ordained clean. An idol has no power to make unclean. Amen. So just because they sacrificed this meat to that idol, it didn't make no difference. Right. Amen? And that's what he's saying. He said there's many gods, but there's only one real God. You know, a lot of times here in America, we call in on a lot of gods. Come on, y'all. We've got a lot of different gods in our neighborhood. Amen. I'm talking about other religions right now. Mm -hmm. You know... When's the last time you rode by a false doctrine? Come on. Muslims, uh, apostolic, whatever you want to call it. Any of these ones that aren't true to the word of God. Come on. That's right. And actually got a zeal inside about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yes. right. When's the last time you rode by a mosque and it angered you? That this false god and this false idol was in your town and people were actually serving these things. Right. Yeah. Where is our zeal as Christians? Amen. Amen. Where is our fire and our... Where's our grit at? That should upset us. Yeah. When we see people teaching wrong things and error, that should it should rise up inside of us. And it was here for Paul. Right. Amen. He's like, look, there ain't but one god. You can call on whoever you want to, the sun gods, the moon gods, gods in heaven, gods on earth, amen, wood, stone, come on, gold, silver. You can call on them all they want to, but they are a man-made thing. That's yeah. right. There's only one God. But to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him. And one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things, and we by him. So in other words, God is the Father and He's sitting on the throne and there's only one way yeah. to get to Him. Amen. You can't call on some idol. You can't Amen. sacrifice a hog to some statue over here and think you're going to get to God. The only way that you can get to God the Father is through Jesus Christ Amen. and Him Amen. crucified. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That's right. It's the same thing. That's Paul's right. preaching the same thing in this small, minute thing about sacrificing to meet the same doctrine that he was preaching before all the kings. Amen? That's right. Amen. And I don't think we have any moral absolutes anymore in the church. Like, the, the problem here, it wasn't just that there, were, there was idol worship, it was that it was merged Amen. with Christianity, right? All together. And that's why there's no righteous indignation when we see error because we're used to living amongst it and right. overlooking it because it's just grafted right in with Christianity. And, you know, until we make up some things in our mind that are just moral absolutes again, you know, I, I don't think everything is just this way or that way. I, you know, and I'm certainly not going to try to take God's place and think I have those answers of one way or mm -hmm. the other, but... But there are some absolutes. Yes, Just it like is. one way to God is through Jesus Christ. Only. And if we get back to that, then like you said though, we gotta leave our intellect behind and That's it. We're we're too immune to sin. Right. We're immune 
to the idols. Amen. Because their problem was the Gentiles come out. They went from being heathen idol worshipers to Christians. Mm -hmm. And that was integrated in their worship for so many years, for so many, so many rituals. Amen. It was customary to them. Yeah. Just like us Christians, we come to church every Sunday. It's a ritual a lot of times. It's it's we going to church because that's what we always done. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's how we was raised. That's how we was taught. That's what was happening here. The Gentiles were idol worshipers from the beginning. And then they were they were told, they were preached the coming of Jesus Christ, the crucifixion of him, yes. and him being resurrected from the dead mm -hmm. as the Son of God. Come on. Amen. And they were converted. And now we have stronger Christians going in and still doing those things, eating the idols. And I'm a, we're going to get into that. And it's a, it's a little deeper. Howbeit, there is not in every man that knowledge, that knowledge. There is not in every man that knowledge. So... What he's saying is, these Christians that are not as strong as some of you don't understand that those idols that they worshipped don't, don't have any power. See, to them, those idols still had power yeah. because they were babes in Christ. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So when they saw a, a devout Christian going in to the publican's house or whoever it is, offering sacrifices to this God and eating at that table, they, the people that was eating it, they knew that that had no power. Okay? The idol had no power to hurt this food, and it wasn't against the law for him to eat that food. It didn't make a difference. It wasn't unto death. Come on. Amen. But to the one who didn't understand that because they worshipped the idols, yeah. and to them, that idol had power to change. Amen? Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? They were influenced yeah. by that. It, it's, it's a very deep subject here, and it's hard to grasp. It was for me. I read two commentaries trying to understand this text. Amen? It's, you know, if you think about uh, older generation uh, coming, you know, when they come up, there was a lot of old wives' tales, superstitions, you know, a lot of prayers that people would pray and do these Amen. secret things and uh, that was attributed to God, you know, and then there was, uh, you know, a, finally the, the church began to teach against that, That's that right. that was pretty much the same as witchcraft, you know, and people started letting that go. And, you know, that, that if to somebody who wasn't saved, they would think, oh, well, they're doing that in the, the name same. of God, so that's the same thing. Yeah. Just like the woman that followed Paul. Yes. And he realized what she was saying. They, she was following him around saying, this is the man of God, this is the man of God, this is the man of God. Yeah. And then the Spirit of the Lord rose up in Paul, and he discerned it, yeah. and he, he rebuked that woman. Yeah, he did. Right. But people around, like she was saying, was putting them two together, <laughs> and it was bringing a reproach on God's name. Right. Here we have... You know, some people understand that these idols have no power. Other people don't understand that the power that the idols don't have power. Right. You see? And so that was causing them to stumble. It says, For some with conscience of the idol, some who thought the idol had power, unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. So if Susan is a a fired up, come on, and knows in her heart that it don't matter if they did sacrifice this to God. I'm going to pray over this meat, and I'm going to eat it, and it's not going to defile me because that idol has no power to turn this holy thing into something unholy or unclean. Amen. But I didn't know that. Come on. And I still thought that that idol had power. That would cause me to stumble. And if I ate of that meat, it would make my conscience bag. I would feel guilty. Come on. Amen. And that would cause me to sin. Amen. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I've got the perfect example. It just I just thought about it. Years ago, I was trying to lead a friend of mine to the Lord. And she was a new, she, she gave her heart to Jesus. And it was glorious how God was working in her life. But we went to this Christian concert that night. Uh, Greensboro, maybe. And we went out to dinner beforehand 
And I, I didn't drink, but I ordered a, a drink without alcohol that looked like a mixed drink. Well, she didn't realize that I asked for it without alcohol. And she went on for days thinking that I had ordered a mixed drink, and it mm. messed her up. And exactly. so she started thinking, all right, is it okay for me to, you know, to do that? Because I can't believe Sue was doing that, you know. And so... I should have made it clear or just should have not bothered to do that, you know, but it, it, it messed her up. Yeah. You it know? caused them to stumble. Right. Same thing. That's, ex that's a good, yeah. that's a good point. And that's what was happening here. Okay. Look at verse eight. But meat commendeth us not to God for neither. If we eat, are we better? Neither. If we eat not, are we the worse? Amen. Amen. And Paul already said, in Romans, that all things were good for the eating. Okay. Amen? That all animals... We can go over there real quick and look at it if you want to. It's Romans 14. I looked at it earlier today. Look at 14 and 13. And I'll just read it real quick. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. That's right. Amen. So if that, that should clarify a little bit more. Yeah. So what's happening here? in just a quick little overview, is the Corinthians were so puffed up in their knowledge, knowing that these idols didn't have any hold on them or their soul or the meat that they was going to eat because the idol had no power at all Amen. and there was only one God and there was only one mediator between Amen. man and God and that was Jesus Christ. Yes. And they was, they was fired up about that and they knew it without a shadow of a doubt. And there were other Christians who were not that strong in the faith, who still thought that the idols had power, and because they were sacrificing that and seeing the one who was on fire for God eating that meat, yeah, it, messed them up. it messed them up. That's right. And it caused them to, to doubt salvation. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Does that make sense? That makes sense. If that's a little the, better. Yeah. Amen. Doubt where the power of salvation came from. They thought it was another from, thing. From the idol. Yeah. They thought the idol had power over God to turn this meat into something unclean that God had already said was clean. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So that, that I think that's a little yeah, cleaner of what, you know, I was I, I had it all fumbled up a few minutes ago. I think, I, know. It, I, I think you made it very clear. And I think, it, like you said at the beginning, if we love people the way we're supposed to love people. That's right. Even though we can get away with doing it, we ain't going to do it if it's going to hurt somebody. That's right. It's and if we're doing simple. it, we don't love them like we say we do. <clears throat> right. All right, verse 9. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee which has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. Amen? So Christ died for both of us. He loves both of us. And I should love you in such a way that I don't want to see anything jeopardize what Jesus Christ done on the cross for Amen. your soul. Amen. And that is a big problem in the church. Come on. That's the right. church as a whole. You know, these people doing this over here where it's all right. You know, we've yeah. got sipping saints. That's mm. what Nanny calls us. We got people that's drinking. And then the other people in the congregation, they see them and nothing's happening to them. Nobody ever calls it out on them. And then guess what? It spreads. Yeah. Same way with any other sin. Right. Amen. And it's it's the same for her, as it is the same for me. Come on, church. You see what I'm saying? Amen. And we have to deal with these things. 
in our personal lives. But it's, you know, we, we bring it down to, well, that ain't going to take me to hell, but who's it going to keep from going to heaven? That's right. You know, it, it may not take you to hell. Amen. But it may be that stumbling block for somebody else. Uh, I was listening to a man yesterday, and he said something that's really stuck with me, and I've really been... I've been worn with it. It's been heavy on my soul, okay? And this is what it was said. One gentleman asked another gentleman, what is the definition of worldliness? Amen? Now, you think in your mind, I'm sure things popped up in your mind, what it is to be worldly. What is the definition of worldliness? You know what the answer was? Anything that cools you down. Wow. Now that's powerful. You ain't kidding. He said if you was either hot nor cold, come on. If you were lukewarm, he would spew you out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to run this faith, run this race with faith, looking to obtain. Come on. That's We're right. supposed to be on fire for God. It said our God is a consuming fire. That's Amen. right. Amen. That's and so good. what is worldliness? <laughs> Anything that's in our lives that is taking our hotness down, taking our, our temperature down, anything that's cooling us off from being on fire for God. Amen. And if it's cooling you down, that's worldliness. If it's cooling you down, that's what you need to deal with. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's, a that's powerful. Yeah, yes. and, and ever since I've heard that, that's been weighing on my heart. You know, you say, well, what is what is that? I mean, it could be a lot of things. It could be TV. It could be your phone. It could be drinking. Come on. It could be any of these things, any kind of sin, anything that is taking the place of God and cooling you down spiritually where you're not spiritually on fire for God because he's a consuming fire. Amen. He's supposed to consume us. It says right here that we in him, Look at 6. One God and Father of whom all things and we in him. Now, have you ever got into a fire and didn't get burnt? No. You ain't never stuck your hand in the fire and it didn't burn you, did it? No. So how can we be in God and not be on fire? How can we be in the world and be on fire for God? I mean, that's that doesn't have anything to do with the lesson, but it's good. That's good. That it's good. good. Amen. Good. Look at 12 now. But when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. It's not a sin to eat that meat, but it is a sin to cause your brother to stumble. And when you cause your brother to stumble, you're not just doing it against his soul, you're doing it against Christ himself. Hmm. Now that took a turn, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. So... When we do things in our spiritual walk that's causing someone else to be led astray or to cool down, that's a sin. That's a Amen. sin. If I do something and it stirs you away from God, if I do something and it cools you down a little bit and, and, and you get a little more laxed in your faith, come on, in your spirit, that's not... You know, that's a sin, not only just to you, but it's a sin to Christ. Come on. Amen. And it says that no sin is going to enter in to the kingdom of heaven. That's right. That's what the book said. That ain't what I said. Amen. That's powerful. Yes. Anything that we're doing or not doing, too. Mm. Come on. Ooh, he didn't say that, did he? <laughs> You know, because we've done, I've done stuff in my life that has caused people to stumble. I'm going to be honest with you. I've done things that was wrong. I've done things that I shouldn't have been doing. I have been caught up in things that was not right. Come on. And the people around me, whether they were saved or whether they wasn't, saw these things right. and it made them stumble. That Amen. wasn't only a sin against them, it was a sin against Christ. Amen. Amen. That's right. Come on, y'all. Right. And we all have done it. Oh, yes. Come on. Let's let's go down to something small that you might think is minute and doesn't matter. This is small. This is eating a piece of meat. What about the last time you stumped your little toe? <laughs> we laugh about it. 
The other day I was coming out of the door at work and when they got them swinging doors and we pushed them carts out full of mail. And when I hit that door, it hit my finger. Now a lot a long time ago, yeah. I'd have said something. Yeah. You know, I shouldn't have said. But you know what I said this time? I said, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not kidding. I really said that. <laughs> I mean, I went through that door and it smashed that finger good. It's still it's still kind of sore. <laughs> And instead of saying that, you know, come on, oh, yeah. I said, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. <laughs> and one time me and Nanny was coming down Memorial Avenue and the car in front of us slammed on brakes. So I had to slam on brakes. And when I did the truck, I'd had that brown Ford at the time. The truck started sliding kind of sideways. She said, you know what she said? Lord Jesus, help us or something like that. Come on. Amen. What did you say last time you shut your finger in the car door? <laughs> hey, I, Nanny come get me for church one morning, and it was this thumb right here. Y'all remember when my thumb was black and fingernails falling off? I shut that finger in that door. I said something I shouldn't have said. Oh, yeah. Come on. Because you know why I had that, that finger was stuck in the door, and I had to open the door to get it out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, was that a reason? What if somebody would have heard me say something like that? You know? What about our children? What about the ones around us? Now, I heard somebody else, I heard something else. I'm going to, you know, it probably ain't got nothing to do with this, but I'm going to let you know anyway, all right? One preacher said, there is children that I can never reach because their parents on the way home in the car talked about me all the way home. That's right. Uh, how... How I wasn't right in this area. And then the next Sunday, they'll say, oh, well, he was just a fill with the Spirit today. And then the kids, they don't know if they're coming or going. They can't get a grip on what and who I am. Come on. That's right. So when I go to minister to them, okay. they ain't going to listen to nothing I got to say yeah. because mom and daddy been in the car down and me and the whole church. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah. Now, is that causing your brother to stumble? Yeah, yes. that's causing your yeah, own children. Yeah. We do it, though. It's just uh, our kids, a lot of kids don't listen to their parents for the same reason because one acts like the other one, don't know what they're talking about, and one acts like the other. So the kids are like, well, I don't have to listen to either of them because That's right. neither of them know what you're talking about. That's it. You know. It's the small things. We you know, divide one another. It's the small things. Yep. You know, we have become slack. On the small things, meat, whatever, and we're missing the big picture. We're not loving one another, and we're causing one another to stumble. Yep. I mean, this is a simple message. It's, 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 it sounds complicated, and, and the way I delivered probably wasn't the best. Somebody else probably could have taught it a whole lot better than I can. But I want you to know this one thing tonight. If you're doing anything in your life that's not right, and it's causing someone else to not accept Jesus Christ or to cool down where they're not spiritually on fire anymore, it is a sin. Yeah. And it's not only a sin <clears throat> to them, yeah. it's a sin to Jesus Christ. Amen. And you might worship an idol if you want to, but there's only one true God, and His name is Jesus Christ. Right. Come on. Amen. There's only Hallelujah. one Father, and the only way Amen. we get to Him is through Jesus Christ, yes. and the Holy Spirit draws us to that. It's a three-part God yes. here. Amen? Amen. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. In other words, Paul's saying, look, if I, if I take another bite... Come on, if I don't eat another piece of meat and it keeps somebody from hell, come on, yes. that's what I'll do. Right. Whatever it takes. If I've got to do something that I, if I have to quit doing something that I know is not going to hurt me right. for someone else, I will do it because I love them. Amen. It's love. That's good. That's real good. Amen? Absolutely. Amen. And we need to get a grip on that tonight. Lord, Amen? Amen. What are we doing in our everyday lives? What are we doing on our phone conversations? What are we doing on our social media? Let's go, y'all. Let's be holy men and women of God. Amen? Amen. I think the biggest thing 
that shows people who you serve is when somebody is bad to you and you don't treat them bad back. And yeah. they see you just be good to them and not feel like you've got yeah. to defend yourself or whatever. I think that speaks volumes, you know, whether it's on the workplace or wherever you're at. They look at them and like, how in the world are they able to do I'm that? Sure. But you're doing it because you want to show them a better way. Mm -hmm. And I think if we look at situations we face, is this an op is an opportunity to minister? Mm -hmm. Then we won't feel the need to defend ourselves or make it personal. We look at it as opportunities. That's what Nanny told me when I before I got ordained, before I started preaching. And me and Susan was talking about this another Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. She said, you're going to have power in your hands to see a lot of souls saved, and take a lot of people to heaven. But you're also going to have power in your hands mm -hmm. to take a lot of people to hell mm -hmm. or to stir people away from God. Mm -hmm. And that not only goes for a preacher, that Always. goes for anyone who That's calls right. themselves a Christian and mm -hmm. serves Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we need to watch what we say what we do, where we go, because there are people watching us, oh, yeah. whether it's in the church or outside the church. They're watching us. Amen? Amen. I love you tonight. I appreciate you, and I'm going to dismiss us in prayer. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to be in your house tonight, Father. Lord, I thank you for your word tonight, because we know it's true. Lord, you said you was the word, the truth, and the life, and we thank you for it. Lord, we ask that you would bring all these things to pass in our lives. Lord, if it be anyone in here, Father, that's doing things that we shouldn't be doing, Lord, I ask that you would first forgive us of our sin and that you would help us, Father, to live a holy life acceptable unto you. Lord, even if it's right and it won't send us to hell, Lord, Lord, that we wouldn't be caught up in things that looks bad. Lord, I ask that you would help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Father. I ask that you would bless this church. I ask that you would bless Susan and Danny, Lord. I ask that you would lead God and direct them in all things. Lord, I thank you for the great and mighty men and women of God that are here, Lord. I ask that you would bless the revival. I ask that you would have your way in the services. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.